Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Art Junkies Live from the floor of Fabtech 2019 in the Esau booth. My name is Jimmy McKnight, the host of Art Junkies Podcast. I'm here with Joe Fontaine of Iron Workers Local 25. How are you doing today, Joe? Oh, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. It's like Disneyland. Disneyland for adults. This is a place awesome. Absolutely. Um, so a lot of people may be wanting to know exactly what the Iron Workers is, how it ties into the welding industry, and more importantly, how they can actually join. So let's kind of step by step explain what is the Iron Workers Union. Sure, look around. Um, all you gotta do is look up this convention center right here, uh, built by Iron Workers right here from Chicago, uh, Local One, a company I worked for for a long time. I actually did some work here uh, a few years back on a big expansion. So Iron Works pretty much everywhere. Uh, most, most highways you drive down or most uh, buildings that you walk into, Iron Workers touched it. Buildings and bridges. You got it, buildings and bridges. That's it. Now the thing that I really love about the Iron Workers Union is that you're not just making parts for people. I mean, you are building mon like monumental huge things that are gonna last forever, that people are gonna be able to say, you know, for generations that my dad built that, you know, my mom built that, something. You know, and, and, it, and it's, there's history to it. Absolutely. Uh, you know, we build structures that last hundreds of years. We build bridges that last hundreds of years. So it's one of those things that for generations that they're going to know that, hey, my dad or my grandpa uh, was a part of that. His hands touched it and had a part to do with it. So how long have you been into the Iron Workers? Um, I've been an Iron Workers since uh, 1996. I hate to do math in public. Uh, so uh, 20, 23 years uh, here. So um, started out um, 19 years old. So what, what, what drew you to it when you were when you were that, that young man? What made you decide that this is the path that I want to go down? I had no idea what Iron Worker did. <laughs> um, I, I work in a fab shop uh, as a welder. All I wanted to be was a welder. And um, somebody had approached me and when I got the job the first time I turned it down because uh, I thought I have a job. I, I don't need another job. And uh, the owner of the company actually told me, hey, this is a great opportunity, um, look into it. If, if you uh, don't make it and you don't like it, then come back, your job will be here. So when I got into iron work, I had no idea uh, what we did. What do you think is the correct mindset going into something like this? Because, this, I mean, it's not just welding. There's so much that goes into it. You're, you're rigging. Uh, it, literally, you're learning how to balance on beams, stories and stories up. Um, what, what is the correct mindset that you think would help somebody that's just starting to get into this? Well, I think you have to have that type A personality, right? you got to have that killer mindset just like you do at anything. Um, where you can be killed doing it, right? So you gotta go in there uh, with a little bit of apprehension, but also with a little bit of tenacity, like it's you against them, uh, them being the iron or the work that you're doing, and you just gotta go in it with that same attitude. Now, your position right now is, is folks more on the training of Iron Workers Union and, and, and teaching the, the correct welding procedures. Correct? Yeah, so four years ago, almost four years ago, I got hired as a welding um, instructor or just basically as an instructor there. Um, we all have a small background um, of a reason of why they hire you. And uh, mine ended up being the niche of um, welding and rigging. Um, that's not all I teach. Um, but yeah, that's that's where I'm predominantly at now. Um, I, I run the weld shop. I run the weld program. I'm the um, quality assurance uh, manager for our tested for our accredited testing facility. So, so you're you're pushing the the next generation of, of iron workers to to succeed as the best that they possibly can. I tell them all the time. I'm I'm pointing them in the right direction, and if they're willing to do the work, then uh, I'm just another tool that's there to help them. So to break down the stigma of you got to know somebody to get into the union. Uh, how? How difficult is it for the average Joe walking off the street to actually get into the Iron Workers Union? Um, the hardest part about getting into the Iron Workers Union is getting exactly what you said, getting past that preconceived notion. Um, the building trades are not that hard to get into. Um, most of, actually all of our recruiting is done online. Everything that you do um, is off our website, ironworkers25.org. Um, go to the apprenticeship tab, um, go down uh, and just follow the basic directions. And then after that, we, we work off a revolving list. We want the best and brightest um, for our trade, just like anybody else does you can be number one today and number 25 tomorrow so um, like I said it, it's always about the best and the brightest so there's no favoritism it depends on you nope. and your performance and your dedication um, we get a lot of complaints uh, because hey th this guy's a third generation iron worker when is he gonna start school well, he's gonna start school when his number comes up right. um, it doesn't mean that while you're on the list uh, to wait to start school that you can't 
you can't be doing iron work uh, prior to that before school starts. And then if you log enough hours, they actually give you credit for that um, to where you can turn a four-year program into a three-year program or into a, a two-year program. We, we give up to two years off um, for hours that are worked as long as it's in the iron working industry and it's documented hours. So what are some of the projects that you've been most proud of to this day that well, I, you've worked on? I worked right here at McCormick Place. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, right here when they did a big expansion here back in the um, middle 2000s, the company that I worked for did a joint venture. Um, all of the architectural precasts that's out here, um, my hands had a part to touch it. So um, in Detroit, uh, being from Detroit, um, I've worked on every major um, stadium that we have. Uh, the last job I did in the field uh, before I got in as an instructor, um, I was a, a foreman for the precast erection um, at the new Little Caesars Arena. Wow. See, that, that, that's what kind of really excited me about even talking to you in the first place is because I remember when that was actually being built. I'm like, how cool would it be to actually say that you had a part in building this. This is something that's gonna be around for years and years and years that how many hundreds of thousand people go to all the time? Absolutely, um, I've been a part of seven stadiums all over the country. Um, e each, one of them's, each one of them's a little bit different. So uh, you had made the comment earlier about uh, being able to, to see structures that you've done. It kind of gets old, but uh, from my house in Michigan to my mom and dad's place in Florida, um, I can show my son in about seven different states um, buildings from the freeway that my hands have been a part of. So um, that, that part's been, been pretty interesting for me. Right on. So now we've, we've talked about how to get in, the, the benefits of it, and what else can we can we uh, tell a, a possible new candidate in the Iron Workers Union? Well, um, you know, just just like most trade unions right now, uh, we have a pension. Um, we do the the earn as you learn type thing. Um, we start our apprentices out at uh, I think right now it's eighteen fifty six an hour plus benefits, and then um, you go up from there every uh, every six months as long as you meet the requirements of on-the-job training, and then you meet the requirements at the training center, um, then you get a pay raise every six months. And then um, tops out right now, I think our, our journeymen make um, almost $31 an hour, like $30.99 um, per hour plus benefits. And the type of work isn't your normal nine to five, this is some 712s for months yeah. on end. So yeah. you get to that level of income, it's not bad at all. Yeah, right now I got a friend of mine, we're getting ready to hire another instructor at the training center and I can't talk him out of um, short term in it. You know, he's like, Joe, I'm bringing home $2,800, $2,900 a week. You know, uh, why would I want to come in there and work 40 hours? I, I keep saying, just think long term out of it. Think long yes. term out of it. Right now is, um, is our busy season. Um, going through they didn't do a lot of work in Detroit for probably 10 years everybody gave up on us and now we're coming back stronger and uh, bigger than ever before um, with all the new stuff going in all the auto plants everything else uh, we're hurting for people um, jobs are very plentiful right now and money is uh, very plentiful they're pretty much um, a lot of 712 jobs rolling around right now that's fantastic well, Joe, I want to thank you so very much for uh, sitting up here with me talking about the Iron Workers Union, how people can get involved, the benefits of it, and why it's such an important thing in this world and in this industry to actually be a part of. Hey, I appreciate you uh, extending the offer to me. It's been, been great to be here and actually have the second time to be able to sit down and talk with you, um, two like-minded people. So I, hey, appreciate, I appreciate that. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, awesome.